Wake up, Wyoming. My name is Len Woods. Thanks for joining me. Wyoming State Representative Tyler Lindholm is good enough to call in. Now, I will make sure you guys can see the article that features him. First sentence, Forbes magazine and cryptocurrency. But Tyler, I wanted to make sure to talk about this upcoming legislative session. First off, what is it, $1.25 billion that they've dumped on us? That's right. That's right. Through the CARES Act um, that came from the federal government, uh, the minimum amount that a state could receive was $1.25 billion, and there was several states that qualified at that minimum amount. Okay. So now, before we get into what we're going to do here in this uh, Friday, Saturday session, how are you meeting? Are you going to be doing this from home or are you driving down there? I'm actually going to be driving down to Cheyenne, okay. so I, I should go ahead and, 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 and note right off the bat that I'm going to be staying in a hotel by myself, um, and then while we're, while we're in the Capitol, kind of keeping our distance from people. Yeah. While I certainly don't have coronavirus or anything like that, I, I don't want to be the cause of spreading it or anything right. like that. However, it is important for my constituents uh, that I am in Cheyenne, that I am um, mm. there face-to-face with people. But then there's distance. the problem of all the other representatives, because unlike this, the Senate's small enough, I think, maybe to handle it. It's House of Representatives, quite a few representatives in there. What, what do we have there? Computer monitors on everybody's desk? What does this look like exactly as far as hooking up? Are we doing this through Zoom? How's it working? Yeah, we're going we're gonna to be meeting uh, via Zoom, and that'll be streamed to YouTube for, for everyone to watch as it shakes out. So everybody's just going to have their laptops in front of them, okay. and that's that's going to be it, yeah. Okay. Okay. Good luck, because what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> right. Well, okay. I mean, I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's going to be. It's going to be a tough one. Now, why is two days just to focus on this? So I've been assuming because you guys have done a lot of prep work in advance. Yes. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Um, and this is what what we're calling our first things first. Um, so these are these are the immediate actions that need to be taken. Um, specifically around, uh, we've got four pieces of legislation. That's what we're going to be looking at over the two days. Um, those four pieces of legislation, three have w- been worked over by the Management Council. One, have been, one has been worked over by the Minerals Committee. And so out of those four pieces of legislation, um, probably close to half will be appropriated of that $1.25 billion and set up for use. Okay. Now, then we got to get it through the bureaucracy to make Mm -hmm. sure that everything goes out nice and neat. You know, of course, Tyler, I think you'd probably share with me, a distrust of the efficiency of government at any level. Now, I was saying earlier this morning, I will trust Wyoming government and bureaucracy more than I would New York or Illinois or even the federal government. But still, to make sure that things get where they're supposed to go and there's no waste involved here or nobody left out, I mean, that's a tall order. Oh, it's a huge order, and that's you're you're absolutely spot on. Uh, for example, Glenn, uh, one of our pieces of legislation that comes from the uh, Minerals Committee, the Business Relief Programs, that sets up uh, loans and grants for businesses to be able to apply for that have been um, been negatively affected by by this COVID nineteen by coronavirus, which is a lot of businesses. And so we're putting right around two hundred seventy five million dollars available to Wyoming businesses. Um, they have to be under 50 employees. But how do we ensure that all 23 counties and all of their businesses have someone that they can have help them fill out that application and do those things? Right. And so that's it, it is a very tall order. And okay. so that, those are some of the things that we'll be debating. Yeah, so a lot of this, I guess, just making sure that this is spent right. But then I have to ask, what about the budget? You guys had just finished the 2020 budget. And I looked at this and thought, okay. Let's face it, it's got to be out the window at this point. There's no way with the tax revenue from any source is not coming in like it was. Or I was asking the governor this, and he sort of mumbled his answer. You're just going to reach into the rainy day fund? What are we doing here? Yeah, so this is this is one of those areas that Wyoming kind of took it in the shorts on when it comes to the CARES Act. The CARES Act specifically states that you cannot use any of the funding um, for a, an enacted budget. So most states are doing their budget right now. It's just Wyoming, we're, I mean, compared to other states, we're pretty efficient. So we've had our budget for over a month now already completed and done. And uh, so we can't actually use that to offset any of our, any of our losses. Um, so that's, other states will be utilizing their funding to, to offset their losses. 
Um, in the state of Wyoming, we cannot do that. Um, so we're going to make sure that our businesses are are covered and that they've got the the funds they need to keep going. Because the reality is, and this is something that I struggle with, Glenn, and and I'm sure um, a lot of your listeners and yourself have thought about this, is it, the the government just handing out money to businesses is not very capitalistic. However, this whole scenario reeks of a lack of capitalism because of the fact that we, yeah. the government shut down these businesses through no fault of their own. And so I, my opinion is I think it's the right thing to do to make sure these businesses are whole and that they can survive this. Well, that goes back to, though, about the state budget. Do we reach mm-hmm. into the rainy day fund to make sure that the government is still up and running through all of this? Because there's no way the revenue is going to come, especially with the downturn in the energy industry, that the revenue comes in to cover what you guys laid out as a budget. Right, right. Well, and that's 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 a whole other baby. And that's why we're only doing two days. Okay. Um, where we can do a total of 20, we're only doing two days because we're going to need to save those days because you can guarantee we're going to be coming back and looking at a lot of cuts. There was and, my question there. So do we have another special session coming at some point? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Kind of figured we would have to do that. There's no, and, and I know there hasn't been any discussion about it, but there's no way you guys can't do that. So then, mm-hmm. considering how late we are getting into the year, do you even now? There's no way you could combine this with the next session and just go that long. I, I, I don't know how you you work that out, but you're just going to have to come back in and rethink all of this. So, how long do you think that session would be? I don't know if I, you know that. I think uh, that, so. The next special session that we have, if and when we have one, yeah. um, will be most likely right around four or five days. But that's going to be looking at um, a different set of pieces of legislation because this this first one, this is the immediate relief. Yeah, right. and we've set out that if we don't spend these funds by a certain timeline, that it automatically transfers to the governor sure. um, to be able to spend it all. Um, well, I'm a different branch of, of government. Well, I certainly like uh, uh, Governor Gordon, and uh, I voted for him. Um, I'm not in the executive branch, no, and I think no. the legislative branch is the appropriation branch. Okay. Um, so we're going to come back to be able to look at a lot of those a lot of those funds for for other types of aspects, such as uh, broadband and, and and those types of things for okay. telehealth and teleeducation, things that we really utilize quite a bit during this whole coronavirus um, epidemic or pandemic. Pardon me. Yeah. Um, and so those are those are the types of things that we're definitely going to be looking Last question, and I'll let you go, and I do appreciate you coming on. Your friend Scott Clement Gillette said he's not running again? Yeah, I just, uh, you know, I just caught that, too. It, it, it's, uh, it's, it's heartbreaking because, I, you know, you've got your friends on the House floor that you work through a lot of pieces of legislation on. You'll notice that uh, Representative Clem has been a huge supporter of, of uh, uh, moving forward with blockchain, moving forward with food freedom, all of those aspects that we're both very passionate on. And I, I, I guess I got to say this too is I've the, the big concern for a lot of folks this go around is we're go, we're we're heading into kind of a kind of a horse wreck when it comes to uh, the state budget and what's going on, and yeah. we're going to need some some veteran leadership on board, you know, such as uh, well down in your neck of the woods, Representative Jim Blackburn, those types of folks. And so um, it's. Something yeah. to definitely consider for voters and for for your elected officials. Anyone stepping up yet that you know, or anyone you would recommend for that job? I don't know. You yeah. know, I've heard I've heard one guy stuck his head out in that in that position so far, but I don't know that individual. Okay, Tyler, thank you for coming on such short notice. I appreciate your time. You bet. You bet. Thank you.